Hello and welcome back to my channel. Two weeks ago, I published a video testing a router bit from Shaper. And one of my viewers commented and asked me if I could test another one. So Joshua wanted me to test this one, which is the O-Flute router bit uh, from Shaper, which is supposed to cut really deep. What is this? I'll show it to you. It's five millimeter tip and an eight millimeter shank. Sturdy and it's supposed to be designed in a way that you can remove 20 millimeters of depth at once. So drill in and then just remove the, all that material at once and the O-flute will help to eject that material. Now, according to Shaper, uh, you can use that both for soft and hardwoods and it should work. And so Joshua wanted to know if that actually really works or if you use this on hardwood, if it will just fry your bits and make it all dull and, and useless. So I decided to test this bit with my typical scientific approach. I took three pieces of wood, witch elm, walnut and wenge. So this is soft, this is a rather hard wood and this is a tropical wood, so really hard, much harder than the walnut. And I decided I would do some 20 millimeter deep pocket cuts on these to test out how well the bit works. I did some research and figured that the optimal router speed for the Shaper Origin is five for this bit. So that's what I used for all three types of wood. Uh, it's supposed to be the same. For these three little pieces of wood, I would use a pocket cut that is 150 millimeters by 45 millimeters and then obviously drill 20 millimeters of depth at once and I would get those little trays here using this router bit. After each one I will look at obviously the cut quality, also how long it took me to do it, I will observe how easy it was and also I would take a photo of the router bit after doing it to see how fried, quote unquote fried, it got. I started with the softwood, with the witch elm. For the witch elm, I can say that it was astonishing how easy the shaper origin was able to plunge this bit into the wood, so no resistance at all, like butter, it moves into the wood and then I started to do those pocket cuts. Now one observation, which is for all the three pieces of wood is, I prefer taking larger bits to do pocket cuts like that. So it's not the ideal bit size if you really want to remove a lot of material, obviously, right? But I was testing it, I wanted like to give it some use and that's why I decided to do that pocket cut, the larger one. It went really well, it was easy to remove all the material. I removed the pocket cut and then I did an outside cut and it worked really well. As you see here, it's nice looking. One of the corners is a little bit, there's like, there's like a mark, which I can't really explain why it happened, but it is what it is. But other than that, it went well. The router bit, after using it, looked like new. There were like no major signs of wear. Um, so I can't really complain. I am kind of enthusiastic about how easy it was to remove 20 millimeters of material with this bit. So I continue testing. I moved to the walnut. Now walnut is harder, much harder than which elm. And um, a couple of observations here. It also plunged really easily into the material like butter and I started to remove the material and that's when it got more difficult than with the witch elm. Because obviously it's harder and because of that I had to put more pressure on the shaper and, and more muscle power to keep it on the same place. It wanted to move away um, because obviously like the, the path that of the least resistance was not where the wood was and so it was much harder to actually use it. But I was able 
to take all the passes and remove all the material. Another observation is that here, for the first time, I had to stop and do some dust cleaning. I didn't have to do that with the witch elm, it just sucked out all the material with a walnut that didn't work and I had to stop and do some cleaning. If we look at the quality um, of the cut for the walnut, it's also pretty good. Although now here we have again on the, on the inline cuts, we have in two corners, you have kind of like a dent, which again, I cannot really explain why it happened that way. If you have an idea, you can leave me something in the comments. That was unexpected. But other than that, it looks good. No burning, no tearing out of wood, um, all good. Also, after using the bit with this hardwood, I didn't observe any major signs of wear for the bit. It looked pretty new, pretty unused, no frying of the, of the bit. So I moved on to Wenge. Wenge is a tropical wood, much harder than walnut. Again, 20 millimeter passes, and similar to the walnut, but even more, the shaper origin wanted to go away. 20 millimeters of depth, right? With a super hard wood, it was hard. I had to apply a lot of brute force to keep it where I wanted uh, to be. Um, also, the dust collection got even uh, more complicated. I had to do several steps to clean up the dust. Um, there were like chip, like, teared out pieces of, of wood that got all stuck and so it was kind of more messy to remove uh, that much depth of such a hard wood. Also regarding the cut quality, that was not as nice as the others. Uh, I have a clear dent in the inline cut. Um, there is a piece of the wood that um, like was torn out. Um, that is not necessarily the fault of this chip because when it tends to do that. It was okay. I mean, it's it's okay, but it is really a lot of force um, on your material, on the wood, on the bit, also on the shape of origin. Now, after uh, using this on Wenge, looking at the bit, there were some signs of usage, although you always have that when you use a bit for a while. It's clearly not... Um, frying of the bits. It's still very sharp. It's still uh, very usable. And so the bit survived. The question is, does it really make sense to use it that way? That brings me back to the question, what is this bit good for? I would recommend you to buy this bit if you need to do deep pocket cuts that are small. For instance, to apply hardware to your wood, such as like door hinges and other uh, kind of things where you need to go deep, but for small areas. You don't want to do a large pocket cut with that, uh, that's just cumbersome. But if there is a need for you to remove up to 20 millimeters of material uh, for smaller uh, pieces, for smaller areas, then this is really nice. You can save time. You can also make really nice and clean cuts because you don't have to do multiple passes, which then um, obviously has the advantage of um, saving time and having nice cut quality. Um, so I am going to use this. I actually am enthusiastic to have that option if I need smaller pocket cuts. All right, that being said, that was it. If you have other ideas, other bits you want me to test or other things around the shape origin, leave it in the comments like Joshua did and I'll make a video and we'll have some fun together. If you liked the video, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, see you around.